Today on BRS TV Investigates, we finally answer the question, is dry skimmate better than wet? But more importantly, is it better in a manner that allows you to test at home on your own tank? For anyone who wants the best performance out of their skimmer, you'll get your answer today. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates, where we put popular reefing gear, theories, and methods to the test by experimenting on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And, well, actually, we do want you to experiment on your own tank today, and we've got a test that you can do at home to help decide whether more air and wetter skimmate, less air and drier skimmate, or somewhere in between is right for your tank and bioload. But first, we're going to show you the results that we came up with on the BRS 750XXL. So over the last handful of BRS TV Investigates episodes, we've been on a journey of learning more about the way our protein skimmers work and better ways we can approach tuning or adjusting them, where during those tests we discovered some well-defined lines between dry and wet skimming, but there is still one large looming question that we set out to answer today, and that is, can you measure which skimming approach, wet or dry, removes the most organics from your tank? Well, today we've got our answer for our heavily stocked BRS 750XXL, and when we're done, you'll learn how to use this same experiment on your tank and decide which type of skim is right for you. Let's show you how we did it. Okay, so using the results that we saw from our last experiment on the BRS 750XXL, where we confirmed that lower air draw speeds produced drier, thicker skimmate foam, while faster air draw created a more wet and watery skimmate, for today's experiment, we took those results to the next level by collecting all of the organics that our Regal 200 EXT recirculating skimmer removed in a 24 hour period with the recirculating air draw pump set to three different speeds of one, three, and five, which approximately worked out to be 440, 810, and 1080 liters per hour air draw respectively. After collecting the skimmate produced in 24 hours at each of those different air speeds, we then mixed each sample with enough RODI water to create one liter solutions and compared them visually where we expect the most turbid samples to be the most organically rich. We should keep in mind here that our goal isn't a peer-reviewed scientific study, which almost has no value to the reefer at home and their specific gear, but rather the goal is to help those reefers at home determine the best setup for their equipment, livestock, and bioload. We believe that diluting what the skimmer is actually collecting from the tank might be one of the easiest ways for the home reefer to quickly visually identify the best way to tune their gear. So with that, here's what we found on our tank. Using specialized lighting equipment available to us in the BRS TV studio, we were able to place concentrated light behind each one liter skimmate sample, and we arranged those samples with the lowest air draw speed one on the left, middle air draw speed three in the center, and the highest air draw speed five on the right. In our example, although this skimmate collected at speed three and five are a bit close to each other, to me it looks as though the middle of the road air speed three is slightly more turbid than the other two, and clearly we see that air speed one seemed to collect the least amount of organics since it lets the most light through. So we could stop here and draw some conclusions about what we're seeing, but in an effort to refine today's results by making them easier to read, and at the same time, turn this into a fun experiment that you can actually try on your own, since not everyone has access to super bright studio lighting and laboratory glass sample jars, we've taken this one a little further. With that, we diluted the skimmate samples even further into one gallon Mr. Chili mixing jugs and using the sun from outside, which provides us the best evenly diffused light source, we compared the results again by placing them in a window seal. Looking at the samples again, we can now more clearly see three distinctly different levels of turbidity between the organic content from each, and this time the consistency between air draw speeds three and five are far more discernible to our eye. I think today's results were obviously striking a balance between the right amount of air and organics really drives home the notion that more air and more horsepower doesn't necessarily mean better performance, and we're putting a little more thought into finding that balance will help us optimize our skimmers to their fullest potential, which is why today's question, can you measure which skimming approach, wet or dry, removes the most organics from your tank, gets an overwhelming vote of a 10 out of 10 from me.
With this simple at-home experiment, using a few containers like these clear mixing jugs that you might already have lying around, I don't doubt that we can all start to make better choices when it comes to choosing a skimmer setting that eliminates common skimmer tuning issues like overflowing or underperforming, where in the end, it's not about which protein skimmer is the best, but rather what tuning method is the best for your specific tank, bioload, and feeding habits. For instance, even if speed setting 3 and 5 turned out to be the exact same, the thicker foam and lower air velocity of speed 3 was actually much easier to tune and manage. The fact that in this case, not only did it remove the most organics, but was also easier to adjust makes this more of a beneficial choice that this particular skimmer has the ability to create wetter and drier foam with the simple push of a control button. I think the next question that we all have at this point, now that we have protein skimmer elements of mechanical filtration dialed in, is what can we reasonably expect from implementing proper mechanical filtration like skimmers, filter socks, and media reactors? In all honesty, it's only worth doing if they produce legit results, and in this episode of the BRS WWC Hybrid Series, Ryan discusses what getting each of these components right can do to help us achieve the most stable, simple filtration approach that will absolutely turn our dreams of a stunning show tank into a reality.